Hi, I'm founders and uh, CEO of G-Converters. Uh, uh, how is everyone liking the OpenStack Summit so far? I know the, it is a challenge to get a crowd excited after lunch. Yeah, so let me try and make this exciting. Uh, we are the leading automated cloud migration technology companies. We have been developing the migrations and the backups since 2004. Uh, I would like to show uh, OpenStack Cloud Migration introduction video before talking about uh, today's topic. like cost savings, flexible resizing, and scalability? If you wanted to transfer between 100 and 1,000 servers to the cloud, how would you do it? How long would it take for all the required experts to reinstall the applications and databases? And how much would it cost? Would cloud migration be expensive and require extensive downtime for the expert reinstallation of applications and databases? There is no need to worry any longer about the complex cloud migration process. Z Converter Cloud Migration SaaS allows you to migrate from on-premises to cloud, or from cloud to cloud, simply and easily. You don't need to reinstall and reconfigure workloads. All it takes is a few clicks. Z Converter's patented imaging migration technology makes the complicated reinstallation migration process simple and easy. With just a couple of clicks, you can complete your workload migration to the cloud. Z Converter Cloud Migration migrates from on premises to the cloud or from cloud to cloud in three steps imaging, replicating, and converting. These three steps of Z Converter Cloud Migration minimizes human intervention when migrating on premises to the cloud and eliminates the major problems of high-risk, time-consuming, and labor-intensive migration. Create a source image with a few clicks and replicate it on the target cloud. Then convert the replicated image to cloud instance. You can see that the source server in the migrated target instance is the same. That's it. You have successfully completed cloud migration. Z Converter Cloud Migration helps enterprises or cloud service providers make cloud migration simple and easy. And we are the OpenStack corporate sponsors and the technology partners uh, with uh, Microsoft, the Amazon, the Google. Uh, the, and uh, we help enterprises and cloud service providers uh, make the cloud migration simple and easy. And our the cloud migration software is OpenStack uh, compatible software. And now, I'd like to talk about today's topic, the seven must have features for hybrid and multi-cloud migrations or cloud-based recovery as a service. We call this as CRAS instead of DRAS. Uh, let's look at this figure. Uh, this shows the uh, hybrid or multi-cloud migration and cloud-based disaster recovery as a service picture. Uh, in order to do this, uh, actually the virtual machines and bare metal servers, uh, private cloud or public cloud should be a, a move to the OpenStack cloud uh, services uh, with uh, minimizing the production server services downtime. And uh, actually, uh, uh, there is a two services type. The uh, first one is cloud migration type, which is run by our gcloud.net. Uh, that guy is uh, support the uh, uh, automated cloud migration SaaS for the multiple cloud platforms. And the, below the cloud recovery managers, uh, we are the developing the uh, cloud-based uh, disaster recovery as a service set based on the cloud recovery managers. Uh, uh, actually, the both of the service sets, uh, I'm going to talking about seven must uh, have features for cloud migrations and cloud-based disaster recovery as a service yes. And actually, the, the seven most features and the multi-cloud migrations and CRI services yes, 
should be the any to the OpenStack cloud migration should be able to support it with near zero downtime. Or vice versa. And Amazon, Microsoft, Google, okay, any, anyone can be migrated to the, any multiple cloud platforms. Uh, let's look at seven must have features. Yeah, number one is live migration. Uh, actually, this live migration is uh, number one, the must have uh, cloud migrations or uh, cloud based disaster recovery as a services feature. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, in order to do this, uh, if you have to stop your products and server, a uh, big enterprise company will not use the cloud migration uh, software or will not use the cloud based disaster recovery as a services. Because of that, this live migration or uh, it should be the uh, mandatory uh, options. Yeah. The uh, process is very simple. And uh, during your cloud migrations, uh, you can move uh, on-premise test to the any cloud, like OpenStack cloud. During this, uh, you don't need to stop your services, like this video file, okay? And number two, and in order to uh, use multi-cloud platform migrations or cloud-based uh, disaster recovery as a service test, uh, uh, if uh, uh, the similar hypervisor uh, migration should be supported. And actually, if you want to move the VMware virtual machine to the OpenStack, the KVM, it should be the working, should be the move to. Yeah, uh, actually, we are the support to bare metal or a virtual machine, any virtual machine to any virtual machine migration combined with uh, any cloud platforms. And number three, and uh, uh, in order to uh, emit the uh, multi-cloud platform migrations, uh, or CRAS, uh, the hybrid cloud migration should be supported. Uh, actually, if we want to move uh, 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 Amazon Cloud with Xen or KVM Hyper-V, uh, you can be moved to the OpenStack Plus with any hypervisor like VMware, or KVM, or Xen, or vice versa. Yeah, OpenStack VMA or KVM can be migrated to the Microsoft Cloud Plus Hyper-V or uh, Amazon AWS Plus KVM or Xen. Uh, this is the real hybrid cloud migration technology. And for the multiple cloud migrations, and the, actually the any private cloud uh, combined with any hypervisors uh, need to be or should be move to the any public cloud or any private cloud combined with the hypervisors. In other words, uh, OpenStack plus the, uh, KVM can be migrated to the AWS plus KVM, or Azure plus Hyper-V can be back to OpenStack plus KVM or OpenStack plus uh, VMware. Uh, that is the uh, a real multi-cloud migration technology. Uh, actually, this technology uh, is one of the must have multi cloud platform, uh, CRAS, and uh, near futures orchestration technologies. Cloud, multi cloud orchestration technology must have this technology. And number five, and uh, actually, the, uh, any disk format can be uh, migrated to the the any disk format. Uh, this figure show the source machine, so disk format is VMDK, but if we want to move to the OpenStack plus KVM, and you need to convert to uh, QCOW2 or raw disk, uh, you should do this for the multi-cloud migration. Uh, because the, uh, the uh, many um, public cloud services is running their open source based hypervisor. It means their the disk format should be the raw disk or QCAT 2 or VHDF so, or VMDK. But many uh, enterprise companies, the on premise servers, is yeah, so running the VMware. It means their disk format is VMDK. If you cannot uh, convert your VMDK to QCAT 2, 
uh, it means you cannot move your VMware on-premise server to OpenStack plus KVM hypervisor. In other words, you must use OpenStack plus VMware. Uh, this is not the right way. Yeah, we uh, solve these problems. If we want to move your uh, VMware to the any hypervisor with any cloud platforms, you can do in a few clicks. Or if you are running the uh, Microsoft Hyper-V as a source machine uh, on premises, you can move to the OpenStack plus the KVM or Xen uh, in a few clicks. And that is the, one of the most have uh, features for multi-cloud platform migrations and cloud-based disaster recovery as a service as, and or near features the multi-cloud orchestration technologies. And number six, uh, if you, uh, your source machine on-premise server has 100 gigabyte uh, disk size, you already uh, exhausted uh, 95 gigabyte. Uh, but you will uh, expect after migrating to the, the target OpenStack cloud or the public cloud like Amazon and Microsoft, you need to increase your disk size, right? Like uh, 100 gigabyte to 150 gigabyte, right? But if you cannot, if you must keep your original disk size, it will be one of the catastrophe, right? But uh, you should you be able to, you should be able to uh, optimize your disk size when you do the multi-cloud migrations or cloud-based disaster recovery as a service, yes. And seven, yeah, actually this is uh, one of the important features with uh, a live migration technologies. Yeah, uh, when you uh, move uh, 100, 1,000 uh, on-premise server to the any cloud platforms, private or public cloud platforms, you don't want to stop your production server for a long time. Yeah, actually our the, uh, live migration technologies uh, can use for sending full imaging file to the target. And then after that, you might have the delta data. Uh, in this case, you need to send the uh, change the delta data to the target in order to minimize the services downtime. Yeah, we are using two types of uh, near zero downtime migration technology. The uh, first one is for the file level migrations, we are using the incremental uh, file level replication features. And uh, if we want to move, uh, if we are uh, moving your the database, yeah, actually, unfortunately, a database file it consists of very a big f one file. It means uh, if we, you are using the uh, file level incremental replication technology, or when your database uh, only one byte uh, data changes, you need to send the whole database file. Uh, because of that, uh, we are the, uh, providing the block level replications. Uh, this technology, as you know well, uh, only the change the, a few bytes or bit will be replicated to the target. Uh, that is the, another type of near zero downtime migration technology. This is the uh, uh, seventh the must have features in order to uh, have the multi cloud platform migrations or cloud-based disaster recovery as a services. And now, actually this is a, a use case. We have a, a lot of a use case so a migrations. So we are the providing the virtual migrations since 2007. And from the 2015, we are uh, supporting the OpenStack cloud migrations. Uh, I already told you we are the uh, uh, providing OpenStack compatible software, and uh, actually the uh, we are uh, already uh, providing the seven most have features for the OpenStack cloud migrations and the other public cloud migrations. Yeah, the this customer is one of the uh, global Fortune 500 customers. Uh, this customer is a move 500 workloads from the. Uh, Bell Metal and VMware to OpenStack private cloud. 
they used two types of hypervisor, KVM and VMware. Actually, two third server is migrated to the KVM plus OpenStack. It means the bare metal servers, a VMware is migrated to the OpenStack plus KVM hypervisor. It means uh, our migration technology uh, is convert uh, the VMware to KVM, uh, VMDK to QCAL2. And also uh, we uh, supported uh, uh, disk resizing optimization for this customer. And uh, this year, uh, this customer has a plan to move 200 workloads from the all the OpenStack to the latest OpenStack. Uh, we are uh, also support uh, OpenStack to the OpenStack cloud migration. Yeah, uh, actually the operating systems and the applet workloads is like this. Uh, the on-premises operating system was Red Hat uh, Windows Server 2008-2012. And uh, workloads were web, WAS, and the databases. Uh, so I'm going to show you the a demo with our gcloud.net uh, website, a SaaS website. And this demo is migrating from the AWS Windows Server to OpenStack Cloud Instances migration demo. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, this is the AWS source machines. We install the agent file, the source machine. Uh, in order to register the source machine to our gcloud.net uh, cloud migration SaaS website. Uh, this is source machine uh, registered just now. Uh, you can choose, uh, uh, create a new imaging file, and you can choose the C or D drive you want to move to the open stack. And this demo, we use the existing uh, instances created on OpenStack. And this OpenStack used the KVM hypervisor. You need to choose the hypervisor name. Then this summary for the uh, AWS OpenStack migration. Uh, well, now uh, we are going to start the migration process. The uh, first step is imaging step. Second step is replication from AWS to OpenStack Cloud. Third step is converting. It makes up and running on the OpenStack. And actually, it's the, after completion of this cloud migrations, uh, we are going to ch check whether a uh, migrated uh, OpenStack is working very well. Uh, this uh, right side is OpenStack, a uh, cloud instances. And we tried to log in. Yeah, same. Uh, actually, we used the background, the write down AWS source. Because of that, target migrated uh, OpenStack Cloud also has AWS source, source machine information. Yeah, yeah we done this. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, I have one minute. Uh, is, uh, any questions? Okay. So how do you handle uh, injection of drivers? Because your uh, source may be on VMDK, uh, your uh, Linux machine may need to have more driver drivers on the destination. Uh, by just doing a block level uh, move, your um, OS will not boot up on uh, open side. You need to inject drivers, right? Do you handle those cases? Uh, your question is the uh, how can you handle the live migration and block level replication? How do you handle that? OS drivers, like for example, my source machine does not have virt 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 IO devices. But my destination. A license. Virt IO devices. Virt IO VDA. Virt IO devices. 
you need to have some drivers on the destination. Your, on the, the same operating system will not be able to boot up on the destination if there are some drivers missing. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, how can it uh, make the up and running? How can we convert it to the uh, target cloud instances, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, drivers, uh, actually, so we are the, uh, 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 installing the uh, target driver, like uh, target drivers during our converting process. And uh, fortunately, uh, actually, the uh, target is uh, hypervisors. And actually, the one hypervisor uh, generally has one single device driver. Because of that, this is uh, relatively easier to the convert it to the hypervisor. Yeah. However, if your target is a uh, bare metal, uh, there is a uh, relative very complicated. Because we need to prepare the whole type of uh, the device driver for the bare metal recovery. OK. Yeah, thank you so much. OK. Have a great day. Bye.